Okay, we are live at 11.05. Do you hear that fan in the background? No. No? Well, Chris is joining us today. No, I you're good. To kill it. Okay, anyway, I'm BC. This is Spirit Cars. Um, Josh, the voice of Spirit Cars, as always, behind the camera. If he's not, we're not here. But uh, I remember back in the day, we used to have a full-time IT guy, and everybody that... Uh, Hollywood. Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood surf. That's what I call them. <laughs> Robert. Um, so anyway, you, actually to work here, you had to sign a release form. We could use your video and your image. And that was back in the day. Now nobody wants to do it. I, so you got recruited out of the glass shop. You're a pseudo body man today. And what we're going to do, uh, I got in a little late, but we're going to do this. Man, I was stressed out in wardrobe this morning. I mean, I, I, somebody complimented me on my blue shirt, so I was like, oh man, that's cool. I put on, I get all dressed, and I've got my cool blue shirt. And I've never been complimented on my blue shirt. I thought I'd give him a little style today. I got another blue shirt. <laughs> I do have a white shirt in my closet. I don't know where it came from. It must have been come from my corporate son, though. <laughs> so for me to wear a suit and tie and a, a jacket, somebody died. And I'm carrying their casket. But that, or I'm, I don't bury me in a, in a thing. So here we are. We won't get into all that. We got a 23. This is our 23. It's a two-door model. And we do offer it where we don't put the insert in. It's cut. It's got door jams in it. Uh, here's an insert right here for it. So we've got it all trimmed out, all fitted. Um, and we offer it also. It comes ready to go. It's got the latches in it. It's the hinged. It's inserts in, done. Here you go. It's The seam has been body worked and primed, and, and it's good. But if you want to get it this way, uh, we offer it this way. And... I know we don't sell very many of them that way. Do we not market it? Well, maybe we'll sell them this. It's quite a bit cheaper if you do this work yourself because it's it's a big part of the job is getting the insert in. It's not a big deal. Just make sure everything fits before you start putting it together. What we did here, we've got, this is some oak wood. Oak wood, we cut it out. It's on both sides. We cut it, made sure it fit, not passed, made sure our insert fit. The reason we've got this here, we've got hinges on this side, and we'll take and we mark it, and we actually got a router, and we we route it out where the hinges go. It's external hinges, and then we can screw into the oak, and then on this side it's got the striker, so we just screw into it, and we put an insert like what would be in the, the furniture industry. It screws in, and you got threads done in a in a bronze piece. You can just screw that into. So we got that. I've got these fitted already, and this is a product. Cookie dough. Cookie dough, yeah. It used to be Polybond was the brand. And do they make this special for us or for... I know we've worked with a couple different companies to get this. It's really... I like it. So, it comes in five-gallon pail. Uh, technically, we can't sell it. But uh, if you call Josh, I bet he could figure out how to get some to you because we can't ship it. But uh, you never know. We might could work it out. It's great. It's like Bondo, but not... You have about... Oh, about a 15-minute work time. Now, if I would do this with Bondo, it would drip off of my spreader. But this is very, it's a, a solid-bodied material. I mean, but it's easy to work with. It's smooth. It activates with the same stuff that you use for activating a, a polyester resin, which is the resin we use in our fiberglass. So it's methyl ethyl ketone peroxide. The reason it's red, it has a red vanishing dye in it. If we're going to do gel coat, we use just a clear, so it doesn't have like a pink look. But this is a little bottle. I can squirt it up to get a percent and a half, which is about what you want. Um, you're looking at, what, three quarters of a shot glass per a quart glob of, of this stuff. So I'm, you know, this is about right. I put it in here. The reason we use the red dye is so I can see. If I, this was clear, I wouldn't know how well it was mixed. Um, safety hint. Definitely, this is, of all the chemicals we use, this is the worst. If you get some on you, it will do a chemical burn. If you get it in your eye, I mean, it's, you won't have to wonder, should you go wash it out right away? You'll be, <laughs> you'll be doing one of these to the, to the wash station and, and trying to get it. So, um, as I mix it, I try to get the very liquid part mixed in first before I start just mixing it all in. I think I've got about enough for the whole project. I may need to mix a little bit more. I want to get it stuck. 
along the top. It's going to go along the edge so the top edge is sanded. The bottom edge of the insert is sanded. I've also sanded the top edge of the insert. And then we're going to put a little bit on the floor. The floor has got the, uh, the Nitocore in it. It's a fiberglass floor underneath. Then you can kind of see where it's raised right here. This product where it's raised this, uh, well, it's not Nitocore anymore either. This is the what is Plascore. Plascore now. It's a different, different brand name, but the same. It's a honeycomb. Um, so you got fiberglass underneath. This mashes into the fiberglass, wet fiberglass resin, with glass on top. Of it. It's very, very strong. Seeing how it's a plastic material, it's not like plywood where it's gonna, you know, if you get water in it, it possibly could, uh, you know, separate and. They use it in their transoms for the boating world and the, and the RV industry for strength. The RV walls. industry, yeah, the big side panels. They have a big vacuum. They chop it and put that on top of it and put another coat and they vacuum the air out. Big amounts probably should have a bigger board, but when you uh, do a lot of body work, you become kind of attached, emotionally attached to your board and. This is a good size for me. I don't generally put the inserts in anymore. That's not my uh, not my job. I've <laughs> I figured out how to put the inserts in years ago, and we've kind of have a plan how to do it. And just as long as everybody sticks to the plan, we're good to go. And again, if you buy one of our bodies uh, that does not have the insert installed, kind of follow what we're doing here, and, and we can probably. Uh, convert this to a YouTube video, can't we, and put it on the website. This might be a, a decent instructional video. We're actually doing something today. More than just telling about what we did. So I'm, I'm looking pretty good. I can see all the way through it. Um, just a lot of times when you mix like this, underneath all of here is going to not be mixed well. So if I try to pull it off, it's it, I'm actually mixed pretty good all the way around. But if I do it like this, that little bit under that, you can kind of see it's a little bit gray. That way you're not getting any blobs on here that don't have catalyst in it. So we want it to kick all the way around. All this is, is like a bonding, it's like a glue really. Um, it's a very solid body glue. Get it all the way around, you're going to want enough on it to squish out. Uh, generally, what I would have done, and uh, since I spent so much time in wardrobe, I wasn't, wasn't fully prepared here. We do not have a battery box. Josh, good call. We're going to have to put, we need to put a battery box in this. What's going to happen? Okay, yesterday I talked about we have one in the mold, we're good to go. So he's pulling that. Yesterday I caught, talked about uh, character development, you know, conflict and resolution and character development. That always makes a good story. Well, and we don't ever have the conflict because we deal with it beforehand. Well, we have conflict live right here. What I need to do, I need to have a battery box in here before I do all this. So, I need to put that battery box in. Well, now you can show how you install the battery box. <laughs> it's going to take too long. We're going to keep it in oh. 15 minutes. So, we got the conflict. We got resolution going on. We're pulling one out of the mold. We're going to cut it. The good thing about this stuff versus a, um, a Bondo, like I said, I've got about 15 minutes time to work with this. Did you get that pulled out? Yeah. All right, what we need to do is we got to pattern in there to mark where this floor goes. All right. That's, uh, that's new information for Chris, too. <laughs> it's not his department. No, go ahead and get that pattern. It says extended 23 on it. And this will cut in, drop into the floor right there, and I'll bond this in. So we're going to do that. I'm not going to drop the insert in here and, uh, and get my goop coming out because that would be a bigger pain for me than not doing it. So 
I go all the way around, I put it in here, put it up under here. What will happen when that insert drops into here, it comes along and uh, it butts right up to this. There's enough room where I can glass these two together with some fiberglass up on top. There we go. Just push it all the way to the back. Now we happen to have this pattern, we do a lot of it, you know, so we don't get confused. This side goes up, it's a 23 floor, we make sure everybody knows that. We'll just mark out the hole right there, that's where the battery box will go. We'll cut all the way through with a saw. Chris is on top of it, he's got his marker in his pocket. We'll see how he does without, uh, without doing here. Yes. That's where the master cylinder is. When you put the insert in, you can see the insert here. What will happen? Can you, can you show us over here? You got your battery on this side. Go ahead and cut it out, yeah. You got the battery on this side. The battery box is actually pretty high into the hump here, so if I cut it directly 90 to it, I would be cutting a hole here. But since you've got a gap between the floor and this space, um, you can actually put the battery in a little bit at an angle and drop it in. So I try to keep the battery box cut flat. Uh, while we hold on that, we'll just finish the video and then cut that real quick. Uh, and then the master cylinder will have a cut directly over it so you can access the top of your master cylinder. And then there's a fiberglass seat that gets upholstered. It's the exact opposite. It just drops right in. When we do the insert though, we do put, this will touch on the floor. So I will put some of that bonding material underneath those two areas so when it pushes down that will bond into it. Um, as you go into the front, there's going to be a little bit of a gap, about enough gap to put your finger between this and the firewall. I leave that there so I can put a piece of wood into it. Uh, that way when you put your, um, your gas pedal on it, you can go ahead and screw that to it. When you put your fuse block on it, you can screw into that. And that way you're not screwing all the way through the firewall and winding up with um, you know, holes on the outside of the firewall that you really don't need. It's, it stays clean. So we've got, I think we covered about everything that does with the insert. One of the issues, now you'll be able to squeeze this in and out when you put that insert in. Make sure you've got it centered in there. And especially in this area, you want it to be the same width here as it is here. So I'll take some, once that's squished into that, I'll take some two inch tape, just pull it over and push it down, pull it over, push it down, get it all secured to where it goes. Once it dries, this stuff is tough. It does not, I've, I've done some experiments with it trying to pull two pieces of fiberglass apart. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. I've got the perfect thing here. And see, it looks messy around here, don't it? Everything's messy and I got my board, but it takes me years to get me a board just right. And when I get a board just right, I like to say, all right, let's use it for something. This is an old Bondo board. I don't know how many years it took me to get it to look like that. I mean, just keep cleaning the middle and it wore off. The, this was a piece of fiberglass and the bondo kept going up to the side. So I had a piece of flat fiberglass, wore out the center so the gel coats wore off and you're looking at a piece of plywood. And this is how they would do it a lot of times in the, in the RV industry. You'll have a piece of, you'll put your gel coat down, they'll put chop down, and they'll smash a piece of plywood into it. And uh, that will be the size of it. So this is just something. And you can, you can always go ahead and do a little... Uh, uh, pinstripe work. I don't do pinstriping anymore, but and this is my last one. I did this while uh, Corey was doing some pinstriping. So I said, ah, we've done a lot of the, the old school stuff, so we, we created some new stuff. So in about 50 years, this may be old school, but it's kind of weird, but I like it. And all that other stuff that goes around, sometimes you've got a stressful day, and you just got to get a release, because here, this is, this is Angry Bob when things are not going well. But then we do have Happy Bob. So as soon as Chris gets her all cut, we're good. We've got Happy Bob going on. Um, I still got some coffee even, so I'm going to go with Coffee Break Contemplations, get me a little more caffeine going. And we're going to read one of, one of these from my buddy Ernie, the Hot Rod Man. Science has proven that we send out energy with our thoughts that affect others. And that alone is enough to alter the world around us. So I've got positive energy going this way. We've got a couple minutes left. 
cut that hole, get them holes cut, let's get this puppy done. And if you want to do an insert on your own, not that big a deal, just make sure it fits first. And make sure you got all your holes cut, and make sure you're ready to go before you put that goop on there. See you tomorrow.